There was a gentleman that I used to see all of the time when I would go to Walmart. He was a greeter, and he also worked at Jewel. And uh, he was a very Christian man, very faithful man, and he always had an, a word of encouragement for me. I believe he had the gift of the Holy Spirit called uh, the gift of knowledge. Everything he said was always right on target when I asked him for a word or for a specific blessing. And one day when I was struggling with certain things in my life that were extremely difficult, I saw him and I asked him, I said, do you have a word for me today? And he said to me, without skipping a beat, God's going to do it. You can't do it. God's going to do it. Let him handle it. He was reminding me, my brothers and sisters, that the ways of God's kingdom are different from the ways of the world. In the world, we think that all great things come from us. We think that all good things come from our effort. We think that we bless ourselves. In God's kingdom, it is totally different. In God's kingdom, we do our best and let God do the rest. This is what Jesus is trying to teach today in the gospel when he says that we do our best when we scatter seeds. We plant the seeds, and once they take root, it is no longer our work. It is no longer our job. Nature takes its course. In other words, God will handle it. We do our best and let the Lord do the rest. He gives another example. When we plant a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds, sometimes we think that that's not powerful. But any type of seed that is planted with love is extremely powerful. There is no act of love, no matter how small, that is not extremely powerful. The world doesn't think this way. The world thinks big. The world thinks that we have to open a school or found a new hospital or be this great benefactor or have all this money. Those are the ways of the world. But the Lord is saying today that even the smallest acts are like a mustard seed. These are acts of kindness. These are acts of love. These are acts of mercy, of compassion. These are extremely powerful. And when we do those things, we shouldn't put them down as not important because that's the way the world thinks. We plant the seed and we let God do the rest. And he gives examples of seeds because sometimes for God to bless us, for God to fulfill the promises that he has given us takes time, right? We don't plant a seed and expect a result immediately, right? We let it go, we move on with our lives. We trust that nature is gonna run its course. We don't sit on a lawn chair watching the ground 24 7 thinking that the more we think about this plant the faster it's going to grow we're wasting our time god is going to do the work it's so hard for us to grasp that isn't it especially as americans in our can-do culture we have to take the bull by the horn we have to be in charge we have to do it all yes do your best use your gifts but we are not in charge and only God can do it all. And sometimes we find ourselves in, our, in situations where we really can't help ourselves. And this is when the Lord shows up big. It seems to me that the problem that we all have, all of us, is that we really don't trust God. Our reading from Hebrews invites us today to trust God, to endure in other words, to have patience while he's working and to be confident in God. We hear in the reading, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. You need endurance to do the will of God and receive what he has promised. Isn't that beautiful? You need endurance. Don't throw away your confidence. Don't get impatient. Don't give up. Like the seed, sometimes it's going to take time. My brothers and sisters, sometimes it takes a long time for God's promises to happen. But with God, 
there is no wasted time. For not only does God provide us always with what is best, but with it, he blesses us with many gifts. He blesses us with the gift of gratitude, the gift of endurance, the gift of increased faith, the gift of greater trust in God. And he does this because his aim isn't the gift itself. His aim is the blessings that he's giving us, the confidence that he's giving us, and the gifts that he gives us are not only for us, but these blessings of gratitude and endurance and increased faith are blessings that he gives us because the promises are not just for us, they are also for others. For we too are supposed to help others with the answered prayers that we receive from God because he always attaches virtue to them. And this is the mustard seed once more. If you remember in that parable, that small seed turns into this giant plant that becomes an entire ecosystem. And Jesus even says it's a place where the birds can find rest and shade in the heat of the sun. Our gifts are the same. Do people find rest when they encounter us, right? Are people blessed when they encounter us? Are we fostering an ecosystem that is Christian, an environment that is godly in our, in our homes, in our relationships? See? So the blessings and the promises are not just for us, they're for others. And so may today's gospel help us to trust and endure for whatever God has promised. And may we remember to get out of the way when we can't do it by doing our best and letting God do the rest. <laughs>